All right, guys. Recently, I became a Shira Gorov fan. Okay, they're not my favorites. I'm not going to rush out and buy everyone, but I became more of a fan of theirs when Mr. Ed had loaned me in a plethora of Shira Gorovs. I became such a fan that one of them I didn't actually send back with him, and I bought the R.J. Martin Shira Gorov Soft Overkill. Um, so I love RJ Martin already and had an opportunity to pick this up for Mr. Ed. And I did, it was around the same time the RQ 36 came out and I missed out on that. Even though Mr. Ed sent me that one to check out. Also, I couldn't buy both. He wasn't selling the RQ anyway. So I ended up with this one, which is one of 300. I really became a fan of Shira Gorov though. Not with this knife, but with the Hattie Magnetic. Oh, love with that one. But anyway, let's talk about what's missing on this one. There's Somebody out there is going to notice what is missing from this knife. I mean, I hope somebody's going to notice. So there is something missing from this knife that was missing from the factory. And... Recon One is aware, everybody was aware, and they sold it to Brian, who owns this, anyway. All right, so we'll get back to that in just a second. But the Hattie Magnetic was the one that really made me a fan. Of course, I was going to buy that collaboration because, well, it's RJ Martin, so had to get it. Anyway, long story short is, <clears throat> kind of the reason why I am a fan but not a love of them is the flipper tab. This thing, if you've got any sort of lock bar pressure, it's not opening. And it's going to be very uncomfortable when it doesn't open. I like this knife. This is the <clears throat> Neon NL with Maroon Micarta. And I like it. It's a little small for me just in general. And we'll go through some of the specs. I wasn't even going to do the specs, but right before I started recording, I felt like I had to have my pad of paper here with the notes on it, with all the specs, even though I may not talk about them all. But basically closed, it's four and a quarter, overall it's seven and a half, weighs in at 2.7 ounces. This one runs on multi-row bearings, the MRBS, multi-row bearing system, sure girl calls it. And yeah, it's got LMX blade. It's a cool knife. Brian, thank you again for sending it in. So has anybody guessed what is missing yet? Maybe if I put this guy in the picture next to it, it will make more sense. It is missing the bear logo. If you go to Recon 1, you can find this one. It was like 550 bucks. It has a picture of the logo. It should have been right here in the frame. Etched or, you know, engraved in the titanium. This one missed it. This is a sterile Shirogorov. It's not a clone. It's not a, a um, homage or anything dumb like that. This is truly a Shirogorov. It's just missing the logo. Uh, it just goes to show, and, and this is one of the reasons why Brian sent it in to me. It goes to show that even Shirogorov knives can make a mistake. Some quality control stuff can happen with anybody, any company out there. This backspacer is really kind of, it's not even a backspacer, but you've got the barrel spacer here. And then you got this cage here to kind of protect your finger from the tip of the blade. That is actually very cool. And you've got a lanyard hole if you're into that sort of a thing. Again, it's got the proprietary hardware that you can use a screwdriver on. You just really take a risk of marring up the material. Captured pivot, I believe, on these ones also. 
There's some milling internally, but it's not really deep pockets. It's just more of an outline on both the show side and the lock side. It's actually rather cool. It's different for sure. So it's not deep pockets. They've just milled a design into it, which does save some weight because of, well, it is removing material. So I have done a previous video on the Neon, so that will have all of the detailed specs and whatnot. It is a full flat grind. It is 0.09 behind the edge. So this is gonna be a super slicey. You know, your standard titanium frame lock, steel lock bar insert, over travel stop, all that good stuff. Action on it is great. Just my kind of action. I don't want crazy drop shut. I want nice and controlled. There you go. That part is great. The flipper action. Uh, any of you guys that have one of these, let me know if you have the same experience or am I just Shirogorov illiterate and can't work their flipper tabs as a general thing. So here is the Neon NL, the RJ Martin Shiro Soft Overkill, oftentimes referred to just as SOK. Here it is with the Sharpie. The Spider Godelica. And because we can, how about the VC Edge interface? Because any chance I can get to pull that out, God, I love that knife. There you go. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts and please check out my Sharegraph playlist over here in the corner because I've done a bunch of them now and uh, I would like to do more. So if you got something, let me know.